Controversial subjects with the facts can be tense, but we are a sub science here to make things make sense. All right, let's talk about hobbies. <laughs> oh wait, so, what was your first hobby? Mine was Beanie Babies. Okay, no, is like, that a hobby? Is that <laughs> Mine was Beanie Babies. No, that's not. That's not. Uh, Collecting stamps, I did for like one day. Hobby. I can only think it was like video games, probably. But I'm trying to think younger. What could it have been? I were, what other kind I, of hobbies do kids okay, have? Okay, okay. Drawing. I love to draw. Okay. I would just draw whales and tornadoes over and over <laughs> and be like, look at this tornado. And my parents would be like, okay, it's like, why do you keep drawing like <laughs> natural disasters? Is like collecting Pokemon cards when yeah. you're young a hobby? I did that. 100%. Still Crazy have... bones. Okay. Oh, oh, fair. Oh, pogs. Pogs. <laughs> that was no, a hobby. I was too sensitive for pogs. It, I, I actually was too. I would see also older kids exploit younger kids and it would make me mad and that's when i knew i was a the world social was injustice, justice yeah. warrior <laughs> yeah literally you know what it was so funny with pogs and my family all my poor family get dragged so hard <laughs> on this but like they're they were very much like we don't like name brand you only get to watch cbc and eat all brand <laughs> cereal and you're never gonna eat a honeycomb <laughs> in your life oh like my God, very God. like yeah. that so i remember once it was like everyone had pogs my parents were like you're not getting what everyone gets like it's like you're not getting pogs <laughs> finally they bought me pogs and they were like i'm like where are the what gas station side of the road <laughs> store did you buy these pogs like everyone would have like timon and pumba right yeah. and mine was like a hologram of like a spider and then it was like i'm not kidding the next day it was like the started to peel apart oh, like no yeah, it was like a like, sticker i'm like did you make these pogs yeah. like and so then i it was like you play pogs and they're like your they pog break. isn't even flipping <laughs> and they don't even want your pot like everyone was like oh i want to get like you know like the right the specific the simba pog and then i'd be like hey guys these are mine and they'd be like i don't even want like even if i what won your pogs time. it's yeah. like they wouldn't even fit in the little pog hole the they were size. like wrong pogs and i was like this sucks but i do remember losing I think like I probably won like a good pog and then lost the pog. The more you say and, the word pog, the weirder I feel. Yeah. And actually <laughs> there's probably Gen Z people who are like, actually, are they having aneurysms? Like, Honestly, what are they it's wild to think of that. Think of what kids have for entertainment. You guys now. have TikTok. We had pieces of cardboard and plastic. We'd slam into the cardboard. And if the thing flipped, we'd steal it from each other. And it only just occurred to me. So was pog a official brand or was there like all these different brands of pogs yeah there was not a very bit good regulated regulatory was everyone capitalizing on pogs or was there actually were we young enough to not realize like pogs was the brand name there probably was a pog brand name i bet it had to do with the slammer maybe i know for a fact my parents did not get me a you know like name fidget pog. spinners right like that was probably <gasps> fidget one. spinners oh that was kind of recent that's, that's like a pog, pog yeah. of recent <laughs> so is beyblades um, well, Beyblade that was a TV show first. But the toy version of it like took off and it's like you battle each other. It had Pog energy. Okay. 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 So there is always going to be that even when TikTok takes over. Right. You still have the tactile. Yeah. The tactile fun. hobby. Hobby. TikTok can be a hobby. I have TikTok written down. I was, okay. So early hobbies, I'd say were drawing, Pogs, stamp collecting for me, loving whales. Okay. But <laughs> current hobbies, one of mine I wrote, at, I was like, TikTok is. So what the makes a hobby then? Because okay, this is what I wrote that I do. Okay. Baking, painting, writing, TikTok, podcasting, reading, birding, nature hiking, and partying. Yeah, like do I those real, count? I think a lot of those count. And, and in that moment, and I wrote on my <laughs> list that I'm sad I don't have more hobbies. Oh, and okay. Say, like, say, okay. There's not video that games. many. It's video games. Music. Music. You don't ever want to do Just Dance With Me or Dance With Me Alone in the basement, which um, I know that is Like, weird. maybe reading sometimes. But reading? I, I, I go into, like, phases. Walking. Of, <laughs> now. And, like, meditating maybe is, like, a weak hobby in the summer that I do. But I don't really... Yeah, it's, it's really sad. I realized I Wait, no, mostly work. No, but you... I'm like napping. Like TV. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, TV. <laughs> movies. TV. Movies. TV. Does that count? I don't think TV counts as a hobby. Because you're not really, it's so passive. No, it was so much anxiety, like on resumes, when it says like hobbies and interests, I'd always be like, music. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hated I mean. that. I'd I be like, movie. Like, it's just like weird. I don't thing. think those are hobbies. Because I, I think music creation is a hobby, but yeah. I don't think music consumption is a hobby, unless you're very engaged in like the scene of music and going yeah. to shows. I think that's a hobby because it's like you're going and doing something. But I think just listening, maybe that's not fair. 
Wait, okay. So do do do, do I have a psycho a man of hobbies now that I no, those were like it was like reading. Yes, you have no. <laughs> a constant fear to be still. <laughs> you know what Brian said yes recently on like our other podcast? Yeah, that's right. Can I speak to the manager? Go subscribe. <laughs> we manage a struggling artist career every week. Plug. Okay, he wow. Was like, Where's the check, girl? Yeah, yeah. They didn't use pay for his that airwaves. <laughs> But I am like, that is also a hobby. Like what me and Brian do. I actually think of it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. But um, he was like, you're There's this. He was like, you're your constantly career. having a midlife crisis. Is what he said to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it was just funny. He's like, he's like, unlike you, who just like does comedy and starts baking and <laughs> starts like, true. like, it's just like, he, every, like every time oh I see God. you, he's like, oh, do you want to read my new screenplay? Right? He's just like, you are constantly having a midlife crisis. And I was like, Wait, the what? quintessential as someone hits like 50 60 when they just like start picking up or like is it about hobbies like is a midlife crisis kind of being like i'm picking up hobbies because i'm like everything like what is my identity i don't think a midlife crisis is picking up hobbies oh, i actually I think, don't know what it is i think it's when you yeah get scared about the meaning of life and start to reevaluate everything and maybe in some ways you pick up hobbies. i'm writing this down i'm writing down midlife disney crisis. and midlife crisis is a good and episode farts. and farts boom baby. find the find the folder write boom, them down well, otherwise we'll forget boom baby. um midlife crisis and so yeah i know i'm just obviously just joking as well like you you it's amazing and beautiful you have hobbies and i have research about it that i could bring up now if you want me to do my yeah, studies do first okay so there was a longitudinal study done, so over many, many years, on 8,000 people that looked into the impact of hobbies on people, and I am specifically going to look at the correlation they found to mental health. Okay. So, basically, they found hobbies were linked with a 30% decrease in the risk of experiencing depression, huh. as well as a decrease in depressive symptoms among both men and women. That was number one. Do they do they have any examples of what these hobbies were or no? I'm just like I'm just like what's a hobby? I think <laughs> anyone can define it as yeah. like an activity they participate in on a regular basis. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, okay, that's okay, why okay, I think okay. like music and TV are a little too passive, but you could take them to the level of a hobby of chatting with other people about them and like okay. going to events about. Can them. I interject for one second yeah, of with a bit of my study, which actually helps to explain why TV and movies aren't a hobby? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this was a separate study. Oh, you're getting hit from all angles right now. <laughs> getting tag teamed by Mitch and Greg. Uh, hot. Okay, so... <laughs> that's our hobby. <laughs> that's our hobby. Sex. So, okay. When I was, like, thinking about art and hobbies, it's like, why are we doing those? And why have we been doing them forever? Like, cave paintings, for example. And this was a, like, a hobby scholar talking about what it does <laughs> is a hobby is about making decisions. So when you're baking, you're constantly in a scenario where you're having to make a, a deci mm. like decisions. When you're making art, painting, mm. you're making decisions. When you're making music, you're making decisions. So hobbies, like the way she defines it, is like your body sort of being trained to make a bunch of like decisions and that what they say is that there's an evolutionary advantage to that because it's priming your brain to survive and thrive in the future when a situation presents itself and you need to make decisions. Like you've optimized on practicing making decisions kind of. Exactly. And so That's then cool. she just finds hobbies as things that require like decision. Like, yeah. yeah. So like, which I thought was really interesting because I'm like now being like that isn't TV. Right. That I guess you movies. make one decision. What to, you're going to watch. To come. Yeah. yeah. Assuming you're not just passively watching if you're like, I love Survivor. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to come every Thursday. Yeah. In a way, I think that's a bit of a hobby, especially if you can build a culture of whether it be friends or people online who and talk then it, about it. Exactly, because the hobby aspect of your obsession with Survivor comes with the discussion and the decisions yeah. you're making based and on watching it being and, like, I like this person. I'm deciding to think that they're going to win based on this. And then true. all of a sudden, it's become a hobby, not just a passive entertainment Yeah, and I think course. when you love a show enough, you engage deeper online, you read theories, you like... I could, I could see someone justifying a TV show as a hobby, but I think when you're watching it, that's not the part that's yeah. the hobby so much. My only other caveat that's and cool. thing I'd be curious how this um, hobbyologist, what did you call them? Well, she was actually <laughs> an art therapist, okay. but this what was... What word did you use? <laughs> did I say You said a something hobby like hobbyology. Hobbyology. It's like, how do we get... She was an art expert. therapist, but she was like studied the concept of how hobbies like affect your brain and stuff like that. Okay, so I was going to say... Is meditation a hobby? Because you're technically actually intentionally in, in some types of meditation. Oh my God, I think it so is because you're trying so hard to like 
not, not make, make decisions. decisions. But it, think of how many weird decisions have to go into that act. Yeah, that I guess act. you're like intentionally <laughs> like, doing something continuously. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that you're is. like letting thoughts go yeah. away. And then it, you start to bleed into exercise, yoga. That's a hobby. It's like you're deciding yeah. like how to like literally hold your body in weird ways. Exercise. Huh. Okay, sorry. I think I got what a hobby is. Go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is just us figuring out what is No, a hobby. but it is honestly, like, that's interesting. Uh, okay, so uh, a few other cool facts. Those in the study, in the longitudinal study, who didn't have depression at the start of the study saw a 32% reduced chance of developing depression if they had a hobby or picked up a hobby. There's some hot numbers. Yep. And then the biggest number, it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> Uh, for those who had depression and no hobby, so like they started with depression and they didn't have hobbies, oh. taking up a hobby was linked with an improvement in depressive symptoms and a 272% higher chance of recovering from that depression. Wow, everyone needs to go birding. <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> yeah. like, that's a hobby I picked up and it has changed my life. And I'm like, that's why. I'm like, every time I bird, I'm like, I'm happy for a week. Why? And it's like, I something's think it happening. Is, yeah, maybe it is just the distractiveness of it. Um, uh, this said, like, it's known as social prescribing. And and to be clear, in this study, they did not see a difference in when they were individual activities or group activities. So, like, it's so, it's just as valid wow. to have. They, they did say at the end of their study, study, it would be worth investigating further, yeah. whether or not when you're with people, maybe that has an yeah. even stronger effect, but that wasn't like found or oh, studied so here. Interesting. Someone um, study that. But they were saying like social prescribing is when you engage in activities that like is like music, drawing, handcrafts, sewing, carpentry, which can offer the chance to be creative, express themselves and relax. Wow. I want to go paint. <laughs> okay so this, but why is it so hard to start okay like, that's that so annoying problem. it's like, like why are our brains so fucking stupid mm -hmm. no what's so weird about humans we're so smart but we're so fucking stupid <laughs> do you know what i mean like literally yeah put it on a t-shirt girl we're so smart but we're also so stupid like climate change is the ultimate example it's like we're so smart but we're actually gonna kill <laughs> ourselves because we're so stupid maybe not maybe we'll get out of it great oh i love your hope you're so cute um, okay are I'm those kidding socks? are kidding. those new socks they're really cute you i these are my like ugly lawyer socks that I hate. <laughs> Your lawyer socks. They are lawyer socks, you're right, but they're cute. I bought them are because they inside out? <laughs> like have I ever worn anything properly? <laughs> like definitely they're inside out. But the thing I don't like about them is that I bought them because they're like marina wool. So they're great for like cross country skiing. Another hobby. You that's a hobby you oh, do. Oh yeah. Oh, In the winter. Nailed it. Okay, so you are a cross country skier. Um I <laughs> like bought them. Hardly. For, we go like four times a year. Girl, I was doing it in High Park weekly, my friend. Yeah, uh, not me. I still don't know why you didn't come. <laughs> wow, I really am gonna start scooping you out the door. Um Merino wool socks for the cross country skiing. And so I bought them and they were like pretty expensive and they just like don't stretch they fit so weird and they looked cool online and they came and i'm like you're a lawyer sock <laughs> like i thought it was going to be like vibrant and something i could wear with like a cool shoe in the summer and pull up and it be kind of like, like skater vibes i'm like suit. it honestly looks like i'm gonna do your taxes and i hate them so anyways, now that you said that i am like yeah i guess yeah like when you said they were cute i was Show like the camera. lying uh, no, that's the wow bottom. even the bottom no, is the so boring plain, but the top has stripes it in, has like orange it's like barf puke orange puke green very beige, yeah very blue. subtle beige and green and so blue. sock buying is uh, not my okay, hobby wait I, okay okay you go. i'm you so go. excited about hobbies right now i know i wanted to talk about that element of motivation but if you wanted to go okay so this first. is the thing i want to talk about like quickly and then we'll get into that because it kind of okay. links but it's like when you were talking with Sounds like, like you're gonna cry. Imagine <laughs> when you were ain't talking really when you were talking about how hard it was. When you were talking about how <laughs> with music sometimes you're like, I don't like this. And yeah. like it makes you feel negative. I feel that way sometimes. Painting, like, okay, so wow, my brain's firing. I'm just having like so much fun. First of all, birding. <laughs> I love birding, and one of the suggestions for birding is to leave while you're having fun. Mm. Which is so interesting because sometimes you'll be out birding and you'll see this magnificent bird. Like I just saw a uh, blue winged teal the other day it was like so fucking cool so pretty cool and then you kind of feel like oh my god like should i do it longer like do what mm -hmm. does a real birder spend five hours and i've only right. been here two it's like no leave when you're having fun so like there's sometimes this thing with painting where it's like i'm having such a good time and you feel the pressure to keep going and then you start like muddying the painting and then you're like fuck mm -hmm. and you start to be like i don't like it anymore sometimes like it feels counterintuitive but like with motivation leave when you're having fun and sometimes it makes it easier to go back 
Even though sometimes it feels yeah. wrong to like leave because you're like, I'm on a roll and every like creative energy bro thing is like, you know, that's how you get your energy up. But it's like something interesting about that, which I've been doing and it's helped me paint. Like I leave when I'm doing a good job, not leave when I've overworked it. Yeah. Secondly, sometimes like I'm at a place with a painting right now, of a bunch of gay bears in a pool and I don't like it and it's like muddy and I'm Wait, panicking. Are they real bears or human bears? No human bears. Okay. Okay. But it's like, but it's like, I, yeah, it's funny. Human, like everyone listening is like. It would be kind of funny if yeah, they were real human bears. bears. It just bears with limp wrists and like Charlie XCX shirts on, like actual literal, like, like Paddington the bear with a Charlie XCX shirt, gay bears. But I'm frustrated with it and I feel this like negative energy around it. But what this study found is that like regardless of if you don't like what you're making or you're struggling with your baking or you're struggling with this new hobby because you're like, I took up sewing and I suck. The reward circuitry in your brain is constantly firing while you're doing it mm -hmm. regardless. Of and the that, ultimate end result. The, of the ultimate end result. So you might have this negative attitude towards it, but baseline, your brain's reward circuitry is higher than whatever else you were probably going to do, yeah. which was like scroll TikTok. Yeah. So then you actually, that's part of probably why all the depression things you were, yeah. you were saying. And I found this weekend, like when I was hanging with my friends, I was talking a lot about painting and I was like clearly in such a good place with painting even though i hate the painting that mm. i'm working on while talking to them it was yeah. like kind of like oh yeah like yeah it's You're, just yeah. it no, makes you feel fair. good that's fair and i think yeah for me it's like i'm trying to with music in particular it doesn't it doesn't get me so down when i don't like it i'm like no there are some things i'll make and i'll be like oh i'm so happy i like got that like i could Ooh. hear it and i got it and i just need to get get for me it has to become a good habit it has to become, yeah, you just write on a regular basis and yeah. you're really just creating sounds and learning things. And then uh, if you make lots of things, you'll realize the things that you like and how to reproduce them. Yeah. You know, it's like editing. Like I didn't know that much about editing. I just taught myself and over time, of course, things at the beginning were way worse. Now I know so much more. It would be so much easier to create a thing from the get go, know how I want to accomplish it. Yeah. And I'm just not at that stage with music. And I do get frustrated because huh. when, in, when inspiration strikes, you just want to be able to yeah. do it. And it is like the production side of it. I get really hung up. And I guess this is a perfectionism problem is like, I think a lot of artists who write music just write the bare bones, just get the get the sketch out there, basically. But I'm it's, like, it's Taylor Swift waking up at midnight, being like, <laughs> just like, is it cool that yeah. I said all that? <laughs> yeah, is it chill that you're in my head? And Whereas then, I'm like trying to produce the final version because it bothers me when something I want to hear uh, how it can sound. Anyway, no, I totally agree with you. The process is really fun. Even when I'm not hitting it, I, I do feel proud. I, I learned something really cool the other day that I never knew how to do, just like sampling and making my own instruments. And I was like, We all stand oh. up and clap to thine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but back to oh, my man. question is, yeah. um, what about <laughs> when you don't... So do you, do you not face the sort of barrier to entry? It's like you have to go over this entropy or you have to go over this... How would you describe it? Almost like roller coaster wow, to get into the divot. Entropy hump. Someone no, that, did grade 11 physics. No, well, you know what I mean? Like how some, yes, it's like I know in, in biology, yeah, like sometimes yeah, it, you need energy yeah, to get into the yeah. state that's like... We all good. love a catalyst. Exactly. So we, what's, what's the, the catalyst... catalyst? And I think oh, um, even true, with this sort true, of true. hobby depression study or mental health study, the question I saw people discussing was like, well, if I'm depressed, I'm not going to start Yeah, a it's hobby. a classic depression thing where they're like, all you got to do is eat right, exercise, and, yeah. and have a hobby. It's like, well, I can't. I don't want to do any of that. I'm depressed. Yeah. And I yeah. think the argument was, well, this is a tactic. To, it's not just saying like, oh, just be happy or just go do a hobby. It's saying, no, hobbies are like just it is kind of like do it knowing that it might work and it's creating these habits Ooh. that just put you in the right situation so that eventually your brain will actually yeah. want to come back so i do think being a perfectionist really sucks because that can really <laughs> oh that, really no i'm just like it's interesting because i know that you like consider yourself on the perfectionist spectrum <laughs> and that you also were like i don't have that many hot like it can be such a barrier to entry like yeah so for example for birding which I know I cannot stop talking about it, but I just really freaking love it. I literally left, I read a book, Vesper Flights, if you should listen, read my, left my house and just was like, okay, I'm just gonna like listen to birds and look for them. And then I was like, oh my God, a bird. And I was like, <laughs> like, it's like, I start, I was so bad. Like I started like not knowing anything. Like I even like to say, you don't need binoculars. Just go on a walk, listen for birds, look for them. 
then come home and be like blue bird Toronto. And then I think the nice thing about a hobby like birding is that it truly is for yourself. Whereas music is potentially for others. Yes. And I, and I, art as and well, I right? can like, see that with my painting. It's like, I'm constantly like wanting it to be good enough to mm-hmm. maybe like share. show people. Mm-hmm. But uh, a that, birding is like pure. Yeah. Birding is so pure. Oh my God. All the 65 year old people the I see. I'm just stuff, like meditating is for yourself. Yeah. Like there are hobbies. If They're, you like, yoga honestly, at home, exercise that can be for yourself. Birders like, no, what's not. <laughs> Whenever like we, I meet a birder. I'm like, so you're spiritually the most incredible person. I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> like they're so they talk to you with like the kindest. I mean, maybe they're just like sixty five, so they're smart and they know things. But like mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just like in general, everyone I meet, I'm like, oh my god, you're so. Whereas I'm like, I'm in the blue teal, and they're all like, you're screaming, and they're flying away. But anyways, I think that the best way to cope with the entropy barrier, though, is to know that like everything starts somewhere. To finish when you're having fun. To find a place where you do it that is just to do that is a weird thing like the fact that I have a space to paint is the Mm -hmm. only way that I can do it literally logistically but also it's so important to go that's where I go do that even reading just have a spot where you read so it doesn't become this arbitrary thing I think that's a weird you build a ritual around it then maybe it becomes more it's like easier to start because you know the ritual now yeah yeah, and those are those okay. Are so I would say things. the other barrier know. for me and this kind of hobby, like music, and music is a specific one because I like like it. I want to be good at it. I want to like. But you do are it. good at it. That's the other thing. Like, I went to school to learn how to paint, so like that. All like the barrier is lowered when you right. You already like were and, taught how, to and you've do. been doing it forever. Right? Yeah. Okay. I guess I was gonna say it sometimes is just time <laughs> and energy. So it's not always that I'm like if I write the song, it's not going to be perfect. It's after working. I'm like, I am so tired. I don't have the energy to yeah. do more. And I know like you're a much higher energy person than I am. So I feel like you, right. That'd be a fair thing to say that like, no, you it, have more yeah. energy at the end of the day to mm-hmm. now go out and leave the house. Whereas I am an introvert and I need a lot of time to like come down. And I, my brain is always like wrapped around work stuff, even when I'm not working. So know what I would say to that is like, find a, <laughs> friend who's gonna oh mm-hmm. that's our dog pan freaking out <laughs> male person's here um Find so a when i think of birding there's a lot of mm-hmm. times where i'm tired but like i've made plans with ali and we go so it's like that's a helpful thing like working people who hold you accountable outside of yourself but it really is this knowledge that you just said like sometimes for me it's like i'm going to be happier even if I just read a chapter of a book, like I'm yeah. going to have a pep in nine step and then I'll be able to relax. It's just so hard when you don't before you're there. Yeah. Um, because it makes it's like me relax it's... better though. After like I, I think so much about the feeling after that I struggle through it. Cause then after I'm like, damn, I am done for the day. Mm-hmm. Whereas like I, sometimes it's like I need to bake something or do a hobby before I can actually like feel good enough to relax. But that that's maybe because you know that. Like I don't I can relax when I'm tired. So it is yeah, just different. True. But I agree. I think part of the solution for me is like fine and a pandemic has been a hard time to do that as I'm learning this about myself is I don't have other people around to like do these hobbies with. Mm. I wish I had some friends that like made music and were at the same place as me, like mm. weren't like a professional musician. Like I don't want to jump to that level and have to work with someone who's like way ahead of me or but also, way behind or But also the pandemic's the time that we've all, you know, everything baking sour like what? everyone's <laughs> oh i said baking sourdough in a weird uh, way it's actually baking just, sourdough. It sounded like she are done had hers she done had her <laughs> so it's like i also think i've started so many hobbies in the pandemic so like you can it's like you can always think of ways to justify why it's hard to not have one you know what i mean like i'm like you're saying it's harder now because you don't have people to do it with but it's like you also have way more time to make music because we don't have any, like we don't have any plans with any friends to just hang out and have a dinner. Yeah. I'm I'm just saying for me, I've literally started so many crazy hobbies this year. Okay, you're perfect. Dancing. No, me. I'm not. I'm not. Oh my God, ew. <laughs> Barf me up to Carolina. I'm not trying to say that. I'm trying to say like, like I, I'm saying you don't need don't you I'm don't need say. the friend and I do you no I still this, think I need the friend for like the burning I feel like you have the self motivation and maybe you discipline. don't but maybe you, it's like maybe it's differentiating which hobbies need the friend which hobbies don't they don't maybe yeah. all need the friend no, that's true but it's kind of like you know yeah, working out like I don't do it really that much except I have like a trainer to help 
Bueno, when I was doing all that back stuff, and then I was like, I'm gonna keep doing but this. But you do it now. She's looking thick. Oh, I know. She's I like, daddy. And now, but it took literally like me working with someone to help me physically to finally build a habit of wanting to do it on my own. The entropy hump. You got over it. Someone honking. <laughs> like it's someone at the door. Girl, we um, live in a city. <laughs> I know. Like, I truly love that. every sound. Is someone honking? Seriously. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like the dogs barking. Someone's honking. What's going on? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I do want to talk about something that's gonna maybe give even more insight. Okay. Like, yeah. Go. Like, go. 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 Okay. So, creativity. I think a lot of this has to do with creativity in the sense that like that does take energy you're tired like you're like i need motivation and like i also am like just like a psycho who needs hobbies or else i'll be like oh that's the point of life or whatever my motivation is like fear <laughs> but um wait can we do a podcast on perfectionism and friends yeah do you have that list wait open? separate or together no separate no you write it because i'm about to do the science okay but i'm just gonna okay okay how do i find i don't know where to write that. oh my gosh i don't Mitch, know you don't know the folder for our episodes <laughs> i don't know oh my God. okay i'm ready okay yeah. So creativity is, this is the, when I found out what this meant, it kind of freaked me out. Creativity is viewed as the ability to produce original, unusual, flexible, and valuable ideas or behaviors that override an established mental habit. I mean, you have to say it again because I was writing that. No, honestly, I'm going to say it again for everyone who even just okay. was, even the people who like. dropped their dishes they were washing and closed their eyes and listened to what I said. Okay. Let's hear it's it. so fascinating. It's from a scientific perspective of the word creativity, but it's like, okay. I found it really kind of like, let's unpack this. Okay. Creativity is viewed as the ability to produce original, unusual, flexible, and valuable ideas or behaviors that override an established mental habit. Hmm. So I was like, that is is inspiring mm. that is very interesting and mm. that could be a really key to your hump of True. hobby because it's like it's like sometimes i think people approach hobbies by just being like oh i'm gonna follow the recipe and right. bake the bread but it's like no mix up the recipe like being creative is about literally thinking outside i thought about music a lot i love music and i'm just like I was listening to Lord recently and like just was like, <laughs> oh my God, this is so creative. It's like, right. you can tell the cookie cutter Spotify Friday songs where you're just like, good Lord, like this again. And it's like, these artists are just like clearly trying to make music like, that people are going to listen or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, if you're in a creative field, like it's not going to work. Like the creativity comes from at least just trying to, you know, think of valuable, unusual, flexible ideas that yeah. are changing habits. Like, I just think that's so interesting. So this came from a study that's very complicated that I loved, but like, I'm just going to try and explain in a way, like not to get too complicated, okay. but there's artistic and scientific creativity. And they, from a neuroscience perspective, argue that they're different. Although the results of the study were like a funny, like, well, my hypothesis is wrong. But <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's very, very complicated, but artistic creativity is associated with decreased gray matter volume in many places. But for example, the anterior cingulate cortex is one we talk about a lot in our videos and increased associations with the brain network called the salience network. So they literally are just figuring out like, okay, artistic creativity versus scientific creativity is associated with increased gray matter in the mid frontal gyrus and semantic processing parts of the brain. So I kind of was like, huh, this is like not my jam. I love to think of art and science as like the same thing and like things that we need to bring together. Then they go on to say these neuronal boundaries are created by the education system and that like our separation of these things is because they, they find that art, art students' brains change over the course of the four years they're in a university art program yeah. to become more linked and cre artistically creative neurologically okay. and scientific like in a good brain. Way. It, like it, it, like there's no good creative. or more, oh, sorry, artis I mean, more, more artistic. artistically creative scientific brains become more scientifically creative over the four years the point is it's your brain has plasticity like there's gonna there's a lot of people who are like well some people are just born better at science it's like mm. that's not the case it's all about education and we right. prime our brains and we prime students to be like you're a scientist you're an artist mm -hmm. and then it just gets proliferated through the plasticity of their brains. It's like, I'm glad that this science, yeah, because it started to just be like, I'm like, wait, no, I love both. It's like, no, they're actually separate in your brain, but it, it's because of the way that we teach these things, which I also agree with anyways. But don't you think, you think people can learn both? 
Yes. So okay. th- that's so what they're, they're saying. Not, it's not like they're polar opposites. They're just two styles of creativity. Uh, two styles of that thinking you can learn and both. creativity. And you can learn both. But mm. sadly, in our education system, we like told. really tell people yeah. to streamline. And then your whole the whole plasticity of your brain changes. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know this, but they studied Albert Einstein's brain. <laughs> Did you know this? Like, like this guy physical, named Doc- Oh, his physical brain. Yeah. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah, like, Dr. Like, Diamond like cut it up. And yeah. they, like, I was like, they wanted that to is know, like, why is so his- smart. Yeah. So his brain contained more nerve cells and glial cells than those of normal individuals. Hey, oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> but, but he had the neurology represented for both artistic and scientific creativity and high creativity in general. Oh. So he, I, I just like, like that. And also yeah. when I was getting really into the study, I'm like, that was pretty like they really extrapolated to make that point i'm like right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the type of things that they're studying is like actively people doing things and studying their brain i'm like there's no way they For could like just like a cut little Einstein. physical yeah. brain yeah like, oh, he's got so it's like many not even firing anymore they yeah just like, like holy shit when this fired i bet it was a lot we're like yeah it was einstein <laughs> so what they did is they got participants to do tests to figure out how scientific they were how artistic they were then they actually got them to play in those fields and study their brains And they found that artists attach greater importance to creating new beauty, expressing inner desires and emotions, and their negative emotions result in greater artistic creativity. And they essentially use parts of their brain that require sustained attention, suppression of irrelevant thoughts, cognitive flexibility, and these are all controlled by the salience network. Whereas scientifically creative individuals tend to think more deeply and are more self-critical and semantic, And it's like the occipital gyrus is involved with semantic processing. And essentially, like, they're really good at, like, like thinking deeply, logical reasoning, finding correlation, and, like, semantic parts of the brain. Hmm. And I'm just like, that's such a cool way to think about Uh, how to enjoy hobbies because hobbies are always so linked to creativity. Like, something like baking, it's like... You can semantically look at this recipe and make this amazing thing and never get away from it. And you would produce what they made really well. And that's such a cool way to make that hobby. Or you could be more like, I'm like emotionally attached to this and I'm going to be making these muffins to give to my mom or like, or like, I'm going to like, I don't know, maybe even like hate this process a bit more because that's part of it. Cause I'm adding in like pepper when I should probably not. And like playing with it a bit cause I'm having a more artistic approach to this could maybe help you get over that entropy hurdle to be like where am i approaching this from is it from my science brain but do you think that all hobbies have to be creative because i don't know if all of them are or i don't i think dropping the t well because i'm I'm like wait i don't know like video games or birding right yeah i mean because I was thinking so much about art because that's like so obviously my hobby. Yeah, but and I think a lot of people turn to hobbies for creativity. I do think yeah. that's true. But like I reading. wonder if it is always for that or if it's just comforting to have a hobby, if it's distracting to have huh. a hobby, if it's a hand, a hand, maybe either, maybe it's creative in those ways in different ways. You know, like maybe playing a video game allows your, it's like puzzle solving sometimes or it's yeah. team building sometimes. And, Exactly. And also I'm just thinking about knitting. Okay. Like if you're starting to knit, Mm -hmm. say you're a more scientific person, then maybe you're like, I'm going to be following the rules and I'm going to learn how to knit. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe, and and that's how I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to say, this is what I'm supposed to do. Here is my, like, I'm going to think of it semantically. Here is my product. Oh my God. It's exactly the way it was supposed to be. Bam. I'm a knitter. And then maybe a more artistic person's like, I want to get the baseline ways to learn how to knit. And it might be a little rough because around. I want to build some like weird knit sculpture thing. So what do you think birding is then? Birding is like how a do you think form it fits into that? of Obviously for you're me. Learning. You're okay, you're learning. You are making decisions because you're constantly having to figure out like where should I go? Like mm-hmm. what foliage, like what water, like you're learning really you're making decisions about your surroundings in order to find birds. But I don't know. For me, it's just, it's very meditative. It's like Mm. you're forced to constantly be in the present, but you're, you are learning like even like the muscle memory of like lifting a binocular. Like (laughs) I like when I lift it up and bam, hit the bird. I'm like, booyah. (laughs) Like I'm like, whatever that is. Like that's a form of like my brain processing. It's It's like now to do things semantically thinking. It's like, it's definitely not artistic. It's more scientific creativity. It's like the semantics of finding the bird, seeing the bird, 
looking at it, saying out loud what it looks like and finding it in a book and then going, that's it. There's mm-hmm. actually very little car. I would artistic. say though, the, the creativity part of it could be in just the beauty of nature. The awe of nature inspires mm-hmm. creativity, right? So it makes you think differently mm-hmm. to be looking and engaging with creatures and nature. So much art is inspired literally by nature. Like, so there's paintings of nature, but there's also people who just like, lock themselves in a cabin up north and write albums because there's like this element yeah. of like being inspired by the natural world. So also maybe- thinking of creativity as a way of like the way it was described sort of being like this thing that involves flexible new ways of approaching mental habits. Like when I'm birding, like sometimes I meet other birders and they there's a rigidity to what they're doing that I'm like, no, like the way that we're doing it me and ali is different like it feels different like we're laughing yeah, you have your own we're way to do it. making connections with the birds to like we're literally making jokes all the time about like the birds relating them to humans like being like 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 in a way that's really like we really don't want to ever f- come off as like pretentious like there's just like a new way of that i honestly feel that we're approaching birding for ourselves which is kind of creative mm-hmm. in the sense that it's not like we're just following the rules like right. we're kind of yeah. making it up as we go and it's not just to like tick a box you saw the birds blah blah, blah. we always are like oh, it's like the last thing we want to do it's like well, i'll tick on the box so that's not how <laughs> oh, I, we are God. birding and i will never keep a list uh what's a new hobby i can pick up oh my gosh mitch okay so wait i feel like we just realized like, okay cross-country skiing you love yeah you love to go on walks i love to go on walks um i'm trying to think of things that involve like decision okay this is interesting that you don't like to make like I because what's a simple thing for me it's because I think during the day and especially because of work my mind is running too much that I enjoy hobbies that are like turn it off off, low key just kind of step back yeah maybe that would be nice because you could knit while you watch tv yeah and I don't need to like I don't love tv so much like I know you think I do no but you (laughs) but you use it as they're like I'm done for the day i'm mm-hmm. watching tv like don't even try you you could knit while you do it your your mom like loves to sew yeah trying to look to your parents like that's you know and I my dad gardens my, my dad loves gardening, gardening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'll find a hobby i also do i just i have trouble time management period so like i want to do work on music more but i don't because i get overwhelmed with like timing and i feel like i don't mm-hmm. have enough time to give to it well to, you've been doing it lots. It's good for you it's good. not really lots but like sorry more than I, I have been yeah now. but i think it, like I, there's times whenever you're in there making music i'm just like awesome that's so cool yeah oh we'll see um okay yeah. wow okay hopefully we learned lots about hobbies and creativity I certainly did um, so make sure you've subscribed to this podcast tell your friends and family about it to learn how to learn yeah give us a life. review girl if review. you could um yeah you know what i was thinking i heard another podcast do like maybe you won't like this idea people like sent in audio questions and comments and stuff and they just did like an episode where they answered stuff and i thought we could do that one time that might be fun yeah that's great we can think about it we'll figure out how to even do that i don't know how to do that but i feel like it'd be fun like we don't always have to be so serious it might just be fun to like wait i don't hear we're that serious oh sorry i don't mean serious i mean like we don't always have to be so sciencey is maybe what i meant Oh, you meant personal questions. Or not like about us, but, or it could be science questions or anything. Just like have fun and take it a different direction. I can't believe I just made a cat noise and went around. <laughs> yeah, like I actually just saw myself on the camera and I was like, that <laughs> is the most embarrassing thing you've ever done. You just did oh my God, it's been a long day. Okay, okay. This is the end of our day. This. I can't um, believe a cat thank noise. Thank you guys okay, for yeah. listening. We <laughs> 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 send us your questions. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hashtag side note podcast and we'll see you slash You'll hear us next week. Bye. Bye.